could could he make a um, a computer out of the telephone, or uh, I don't know what they were afraid of. First of all, he had no desire to. Secondly, it wouldn't have accomplished anything. Thirdly, he couldn't do it. Kevin managed to elude the authorities into the next year. Then, on February 15, 1995, they found him in Raleigh, North Carolina. The FBI's most wanted computer hacker is behind bars. Kevin Mitnick was jailed without bond in Raleigh, North Carolina, where he was arrested this week. He's accused of breaking into corporate computers nationwide. Private computer experts say so many other hackers are at work that privacy is virtually impossible. The FBI had managed to track Kevin with the help of a mysterious computer expert, Sutomo Shimamura, who, along with some friends, had managed to track Kevin's cellular phone signal to the apartment he was staying in. One of Shimamura's friends who was there while the cellular signal was being traced was none other than John Markoff, who wrote an even bigger front page story this time. Sure enough, I opened the door the next day to the hotel room, and there was the Times outside the door, and I picked it up and I just thought, oh my God. This article had a whole new list of things that Kevin had supposedly done, including breaking into Shimamura's ultra-secure computer, leaving nasty voicemail messages, and stealing 20,000 credit card numbers, something that was mentioned in the first paragraph on the front page. But 13 paragraphs later on page D17, it was revealed that he had never used any of them. In fact, this was a list of credit card numbers that had been left lying around by internet service provider Netcom for almost a year. Netcom credit card file. Everybody had that file. If you didn't have that file, you were a loser. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people had that. They swapped it around like, uh, you know, bubblegum or something. And then they claim that he's the one that did it and he's the one that had it when that was floating around for months before he theoretically had it. Everybody and his sister's got a million credit card numbers. What's the big deal with credit card numbers? It's a meaningless thing to have. I mean, what I want to know is, you know, I mean, did he threaten anybody in any way? Did he claim he was going to do some particular set of harm? Are there, are there any notebooks that show that he had plans to, you know, conspire to commit any particular thing? I mean, other than humiliating <laughs> Satomo Shimamura, which any idiot who's ever met Shimamura could have told him this was not the guy to mess with. And I mean, I met Shimamura once. The first time I met Shimamura it was in front of Congress. And I was testifying to a congressional subcommittee. And here's this guy in sandals and like ragged ass cutoffs. You know, and the rest of us are like done up and tied. And it's me and like the Attorney General from New Jersey. And we're sitting there and you know, and we're giving our best sort of yes, we're in front of Congress thing. And Shimamura is there and this you know, surfer gear, and he like pulls out this AT&T cell phone, pulls it out of the shrink wrap, finger hacks it, and starts monitoring phone calls going up and down Capitol Hill, while an <laughs> FBI agent is standing at his shoulder, listening to him. And I'm like, this fucker's got balls the size of durian fruit. You know, this is unbelievable. This is the heaviest guy I've ever seen doing I mean, uh, he's hacking, right? I mean, he was, he was finger hacking this phone in front of Congress with two FBI agents and, the, and John Gage from Sun Microsystems in the room from him. And I was like, wow, you know? I mean, I was impressed. Inside of a week, Shimamura and Markov had signed a book deal estimated to be worth three quarters of a million dollars. It would be another 19 months before Kevin would even be indicted. The book, entitled Takedown, was finished by the end of the year. I, I, when I read it, I was aghast. I, I was aghast. It was Sotumu's eating and skateboarding habits. I, I'd been to a lot of the restaurants he'd been to, but I don't think I needed a hacker book to tell me about them. Take down. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what I want to say about take down. <laughs> take down was not well received. 1996 came and went, as did 1997. Kevin remained in prison without even a bail hearing, and no prospect of a trial anytime soon. A 25-count indictment accused him of nothing more serious than lying on the telephone about who he was, and copying software which he never tried to sell or even distribute. Nothing about hacking into Shimamura's machine, nothing about having 20,000 credit card numbers, nothing that would have appeared in a John Markoff story. North Carolina had also charged him with making free cellular phone calls, Kevin was given a two-year sentence, more than he would have gotten from manslaughter, but the federal charges still remained. 
They even put him in solitary confinement again because the prison authorities convinced themselves that he was going to build a transmitter out of a Walkman, sneak into the warden's office, and monitor his conversations. The mainstream media made light of it, claiming Mitnick was put in solitary for having too many cans of tuna. What everyone seemed to forget was that years were going by, and this guy had yet to be tried. And then things got a whole lot worse. June 1998. A movie version of Takedown was announced. Skeet Ulrich, who played a killer in Scream, was set to play Kevin Mitnick, and Russell Wong from the Joy Luck Club would be Sutomo Shimamura. It didn't seem to matter to anyone that the real-life Kevin was still rotting in prison without a trial. According to the script we managed to get our hands on, he had been found guilty and sentenced already. The magic of Hollywood. They even brought Kevin and Sutomo closer. In real life, they had only met for a few seconds in the courtroom. In the Hollywood version, they met in a dark alleyway, where Kevin would proceed to bash Shutomo over the head with a garbage can lid. We had to tell the world that this was a big mistake. The truth needed to be told. And we could either do it ourselves or use the media. That's right, the media. Democracy's biggest allies, committed to informing the public no matter the cost, the true conscience of America. Don't yell at me, everyone's in front of me. Well, tell him to come back. He's coming to the mic. Coming to the mic. Gabe, Gabe, come back. Would you guys get down, Gabe? Come on, Gabe. Gabe, come on. 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 Gabe, we decided to do it ourselves. So we found Skeet Ulrich's apartment in New York in an old phone book and paid a visit to try and get him the real story. But he had moved. I know, because the doorman let me look at every single name in the book. So the next stop was Miramax Films on the west side. We figured they'd appreciate a chance to correct all the mistakes in the screenplay. And we knew we'd be warmly received because, well, this was Merrimax, the company that distributed Michael Moore's latest film. You know, the guy of films in everybody's lobby. Hey, how are we here for Merrimax? Can I see you? Sorry, you can't film in here. Can I have film in here? No, it's a landmark. Sorry, you can't. Yeah, this is yeah. So there's no way you can call upstairs. There's no and pictures to show you. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's you have to call them. They will call me. You still can't last this. After they call me, let me. This wasn't going well. How could a movie company tell us to stop filming? All we wanted to do was talk to somebody. What a letdown. Well, his light is on, so he's capturing everything. So if you could please go outside before he has to call the police. All right, so we don't want that. So we'll, uh, we'll go outside. We called the office and waited to hear back from them, but we never did. It was like they were scared of us. Maybe they actually agreed with Bill Clinton that hackers were as one-dimensional as they were in this movie script. How could we get them to see the other side? That night, New York City introduced unlimited ride metro cards, and we decided to figure out how long it would take for our cards to reset so we could let people in for free. This is what the hacker world was really all about. Why didn't they see this? Why did it always have to be something evil to the people who didn't get it? We had only one option. Okay, for Off the Hook, I recently uh, heard the show where you guys received a copy of the script for Takedown. I found it to be really amusing how the script writers can take the truth and not twist it or fabricate it, but just plain lie about what happened. I have heard about Kevin's story and uh... Thanks to Off the Hook, I heard about this meeting and uh, I decided to come and uh, see what I can do to help. It wasn't from me, it was from somebody else, but I knew exactly that. Is there a good catchiness? Oh, what's, yeah, what's yeah, it? yeah. From Supermax to Miramax. Three and a half years with no trial. And then you can make another one from Miramax to Supermax. And no trial. When they see two Free Kevin stickers, when they see 10, 20, 100, they're going to say, who the hell is Kevin? And they're going to keep saying it until somebody answers them. One or two people that know more about it are one or two people more on our side. Those two people get two people, we get two people, you know how it works. Yeah, Basically, yes. we're going to be in their face every step of the way. 
And if it comes to showing this thing in the screen, you know, in theaters, we're going to be there too. And what we're doing now isn't going to be finished until Kevin has his trial, until Kevin's out. A uh, guilty by Hollywood or something like oh, that's that. That's a good one. Wow, that's good. I, I like that's that. Um, yeah, I, I did look at the script and uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's a shame. And uh, it definitely shouldn't uh, be something out there uh, for someone who knows very little about Kevin to then see this movie and have ideas in their head that, that are untrue. We had tried talking to them and they wouldn't listen. Now by having a demonstration outside their offices, they would have to listen. But we were a bunch of hackers. What did we know about demonstrations? Just that they can turn into riots, especially when the mayor was banning demonstrations outside City Hall and the cops were shooting people a whole lot more. We needed guidance. Someone with experience. We looked all over town for an activist. Maybe one of those gray-haired hippies from the 60s. We found one. Sort of. <laughs> What's, what's it like demonstrating here? Did you get the harass? Well, they hate our guts because they don't want the truth to come out. Why do, you, why do you think there isn't more activism? Because people don't care, they're scared, they're afraid, they're afraid they'll get into trouble. I can understand it, you know, I mean, but uh, we still have to take a stand, afraid or not. We have to at least make, give it a try, we have to give it a shot, you know. Has uh, this cop been giving you any trouble? No, no, he's been standing there, he hasn't bothered me. And we have a president that wants to suck their brains out. That bothers a lot of people, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, it bothers... Uh, anybody that's decent gets bothered when a little child is tortured to death, you know? Oh, when a president's sucking their brains out. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't exactly what we had in mind. I got a real earful about the evils of homosexuals and communists. But in the end, he told us the one thing we needed to hear. When you demonstrate, make sure you're in the right. And that's the one thing we were sure of. We were right. They arrived. We had no idea what to expect. We just kind of stood there for a while, not knowing what to do. Our converted phone company van got more attention than we did. My name is Noah Kinnickstein. I'm an attorney. For Miramax? Or no, no. For oh, you I, all. I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm a law, I'm not from, I'm representing you all. Okay, great. So Thank no you. one's getting arrested, right? Yeah, I didn't plan on it. Good, good. The National Lawyers Guild actually sent someone to protect us, and that was the turning point. Things began to come together. Even members of the media started to show up. It seemed like everyone except Miramax was taking this seriously. We learned that when you stand outside a film studio's offices with picket signs, people notice. demonstration here. They're going to be marching around. I thought I would tell you. That you could tell the, tell the precinct. Sorry. Tell the precinct and tell them I'm a lawyer. It's nice and calm. No problems at all. Glad, but they're going to have a little debt and they're going to be marching around. So if you want to have, I, I'll have that. I want to just tell you that. I appreciate that very much. All right. you tell me approximately, sir, how many? I would say there's going to be maybe uh, 50, 50 people, Patty. 50 to 60, maximum 50. Max, maximum 50, 60 people. What area are you doing it? They're going to do it here in front of Miramax uh, Films. They're demonstrating about a movie that they're making. I see. Okay, okay. fine. I appreciate you stopping All me. Right. And, and I'll have the precinct nice concern. I'll tell them that, sir. Thank you very much okay. for your advice. No, no they're not going to come on purpose. Like, people are, you know, you're talking about... You're talking about suits. They don't give a fuck. You gotta go hand it to them. Right. Uh, don't harass the people that walk by. Some Why? people, some people have crises going on in their lives. They can't be bothered with our problems. Y'all have a permit? Do y'all have a permit? Who's in charge out here? Do y'all have a permit? All right. As long as you don't block in front of the entrance, you stay to the side, please. Thank you. They can walk in front. Yeah, I guess so. They can walk in front. The cops have been As long notified. as you don't block the entrance for the people to come no, in, no, I don't have no problem. You're not don't no block the entrance. First Amendment, right? Don't you block the entrance. Problem. That's all I'm saying. It's ringing. I got put in voicemail. I guess I got too many calls. I just went straight to voicemail. I'll leave a message there. Hi, this is a protest outside. Are you are you guys there? Um, if you get this, come outside. We're right right down here. I see someone. All right. Well, 
Maybe I'll pick up the phone and, or come downstairs later. So 